Hello everyone. Welcome to the second lecture in carbohydrate series by Chem Instruction. Today I'm going to talk about the reducing and non-reducing sugars and I'm going to show you some tests that we can do in laboratories uh, to determine if a carbohydrate is reducing or not. And at the end of the video, I will solve some of the questions that has been already asked in the competitive exams. Any carbohydrate that is capable of reducing others act as the reducing agent is called reducing sugar. It is quite easy to tell if a carbohydrate is reducing or not by looking at its open chain form, that is the Fischer projection. If it is an aldose sugar, then it is a reducing sugar. And it is absolutely crucial that it, this aldehyde should not be protected if it has to pass the test for reducing sugar. In the family of ketones, it is only the alpha hydroxy ketone where this hydroxy is again not protected. That ketone only class, uh, comes under the class of the reducing sugar. There are several tests that can be done in order to determine if a carbohydrate is reducing or not, like Tollens, Fellings and Benedict's test. For today's video, I'm only going to focus on Tollens test. You can find details about Fellings and Benedict's test in my next video. Silver amine complex, where, uh, where the silver exists in the plus one oxidation state, is the active reagent for Tollens test. And it is not commercially available due to its short shelf life. Hence, it has to be prepared in the lab. The way this active reagent for Tollens test can be prepared in the lab is few drops of sodium hydroxide is added to the aqueous solution of the silver nitrate. And these hydroxide ions converts the silver nitrate into the silver oxide, which precipitates as brown solid from the solution. And in the meantime, sodium nitrate and water is also formed. To this solution of silver oxide in the test tube, substantial amount of ammonia is added and it results in the uh, formation of this active reagent and sodium hydroxide is reformed. Once you have this active reagent prepared, uh, then you can add the carbohydrate whose reducing property you want to determine into this solution. You have carbohydrate, and its reducing property is in question. You are adding silver amine complex. In fact, you have to add the carbohydrate uh, into the solution that is formed here. And what happens is, if this carbohydrate is a reducing sugar, it will reduce silver, which is in plus one oxidation state, into zero oxidation state, which is a metallic silver. If you are doing this, uh, this test in the test tube, you will see a silver mirror is formed. This indicates the positive tolerance test, which means the corresponding carbohydrate is a reducing sugar. Taking aldose sugar for an example, R represents the rest of the carbohydrates and this aldehyde is the aldehyde that is present in the carbon one position. The reducing sugar will reduce silver which is in plus one oxidation state into silver zero now this is reduction in the meantime the aldehyde itself will be oxidized into carboxylate the overall medium for this test is basic that is why this carboxylic acid exists in the form of the carboxylate now you know why aldoses are reducing sugars this leads me to answer the question, among the family of ketones, why is it that only the alpha hydroxy ketones gives the positive tolerance test while all other ketones gives negative test? I have taken the example of D fructose. This is alpha hydroxy ketone where the hydroxy is free. Tolerance test is done under alkaline condition. So under alkaline condition, that is in the presence of OH minus, it undergoes Ketoenol tautomerism, resulting in the formation of in diol. So this O minus grabs proton from water. And the first ketoenol tautomerism results in the formation of this in diol. Then there is another ketoenol tautomerism. That is the hydroxide group. Hydroxide, again the media is basic. So it is going to grab this proton and accept a proton from another molecule of water and it results in the formation of 
and aldose sugar because this is the sp2 center over here so the uh, proton can come from either from the top side or the bottom side so at this position you will get a mixture of both uh, this uh, sugar and the other sugar will be where the hydroxide group is on the left hand side the idea is via two subsequent e ketoenol tautomerism this alpha hydroxy ketone is converted into an aldose sugar once it gets converted into aldose sugar it responds positively to tollens test it is absolutely crucial that this hydroxy should be free had it been protected as ome ether then this second ketoenol tautomerization would not have been possible moving on to the cyclic form how can you tell if a sugar is reducing or not by just looking at its cyclic structure for that you need to identify some of the functional groups starting from aldehydes if you want to protect this carbonyls it can be done by either forming hemiacetals or uh, or acetals and these are usually done under acidic conditions by using any alcohol that you want depending upon the conditions it can result in the form of hemiacetals one of the hydroxides is free and the other hydroxide is protected as or prime so this is hemi acetal and the other way of the protection of the, these aldehydes is acetal where both the hydroxides are protected as or prime so this there is no hemi over here only acetal similarly with ketones by using the desired alcohol under acidic conditions you can generate either a hemi ketal when one of the hydroxides is free and it is coming from ketone where both the groups are r so this is hemi ketal and a proper ketal would be when both the hydroxides are protected if the carbohydrate drawn in the cyclic form has a hemi acetal group like shown here this is the carbon and to it is attached h and this is another r group so we can see it is coming from aldehyde and one of the hydroxides is free however the other hydroxide is protected so this comes under the class of hemi acetal if it has hemi acetal group it becomes a reducing sugar why because as i had mentioned earlier these cyclic forms of carbohydrates are in continuous equilibrium with the, with the ring open form even though the majority of it lies towards the cyclic form as indicated by this arrow when it when the ring opens up then it results in the formation of the aldehyde and we know that the aldose sugars gives positive tollens test and if the sugars if the cyclic form of the carbohydrates has hemi ketal group this carbon here look at the anomeric center this is a this is coming from ketone because this is r and this is another r one of the hydroxide is free and the other hydroxide is protected as so this comes under the class of hemi ketal not all hemi ketals are reducing sugars only those which has a free alpha hydroxy groups are reducing sugars so in this case this is a reducing sugar why because this exists in the equilibrium with the open chain form which looks like this just a bit earlier i had men mentioned that why alpha hydroxy are reducing sugars so you just need to identify these hemi acetal and hemi ketals anywhere in the carbohydrate and if they are present they are reducing sugars and these are some of the questions that were asked in iit jam exams and by using the information that i have already mentioned earlier let's try to solve these questions the question said circle all the reducing sugars in the list so let's get started with a i would suggest first target the anomeric center because the high probability of finding the hemi ketal hemi acetal acetal or ketal group would be at the anomeric center so looking at this is the anomeric center the other group here is h first thing we can say this is coming from aldehyde because this is r group and this is h so it's aldehyde one of the hydroxide is free and the other one is protected so this is hemi 
acetone, which means this is a reducing sugar. Moving on to the next one, this is the anomeric center. The other group is H. Now this is again coming from aldehyde because this is R and H. One of the hydroxides is protected as OME ether and the other hydroxide is protected as well. So this is acetone. So we know that if it has the acetyl group, this is not a reducing sugar. Next, this is the anomeric center and this is coming from ketone because this is one of the R and this is another R group. However, this is not a hemiketal because both of the hydroxides, that is this hydroxide is protected as OME ether and this hydroxide is also protected. So this is a ketal. So this is also not a reducing sugar. Moving on to D. This is the anomeric center. Now this is coming from aldehyde. This is R. This is H. Both of the hydroxy groups are again protected here. This is acetal group. So this is again not a reducing sugar. Now this is again the anomeric center and it's coming from aldehyde group because this is H and this is R. One of the hydroxides is free and the other one is protected. This is the hemiacetal group. So this is a reducing sugar. And the last one is quite easy. So this has alpha hydroxy ketone. This is ketone and this is the alpha group and there's a hydroxide attached to it. So because of this, this is a reducing sugar. Next question is from the disaccharide family, maltose and sugar, sucrose. Let's determine if maltose is a reducing sugar or not. First step is identify the anomeric center. For this carbohydrate, the anomeric center is placed here. And for this carbohydrate, anomeric center is here. The next step is find out if it is hemiketal, hemiacetal, acetal or ketal. The other group here is H and the other group here is H. Now this is coming from aldehyde because this is H, this is R and one of the hydroxides are free and the other one is protected. So this is hemiacetal. And why would this contribute to the reducing property of the sugar? Because this can open up this way and it results in the formation of the aldose. So that gives the positive toluene test. Looking at this anomeric center, this is coming from, again, aldehyde. So this is H and this is R and both of the hydroxides are protected. So this is acetal. So among the two anomeric centers, one of them is hemiacetal. Even that one hemiacetal center would add to the reducing property of the sugar. So overall, this is a reducing sugar. Moving on to the sucrose. This is the anomeric center. And here, this is the anomeric center. After you have correctly identified the anomeric center, again, let's determine what kind of protected carbonyl it is. So the other group here is H. I'm sorry about that. This is coming from the aldehyde because this is the R group and this is the H group and both the hydroxides are protected. So this is acetal. Moving on to this anomeric center, this is coming from ketone because this is one of the R's, this is another R and both the hydroxides are protected. So this is ketal. We know that if it contains a ketal, uh, ketal or acetal group, it will not contribute to the reducing property because the ring cannot open up and also it cannot result in the formation of alpha hydroxy ketone or aldehyde. So that is why it is not a reducing sugar. To sum up, First, look at the anomeric center because most probably you will find that hemiacetal or hemiketal group at the anomeric center. Try to identify what kind of protected carbonyl it is and if it is hem uh, hemiacetal group, then just blindly go for yes, it is a reduce reducing sugar. And if it is hemiketal group, then it has to be alpha hydroxy group which is free. And if, if the hemiketal group is such that there is no alpha hydroxy group, then uh, of course it is not a reducing sugar. I'm going to wrap up my lecture here. Just in case you are having difficulty in determining which center is the anomeric center, I'm going to make a new video on just anomeric center topic. And that will help you to identify the anomeric centers in the complex uh, sugars like disaccharides, polysaccharides. And if you have any questions, Please write it down in this comment section below.
I would be happy to provide you the answers. Please like and subscribe to my channel. This will motivate me to make more videos and I can help you to improve your knowledge of chemistry.